that. How many's ever been there? And you're gonna get, you're gonna, you're gonna think yourself and move yourself into depression and into a state where you think you're not blessed when you're blessed. Yes, yes. Yes. Right, we go, that's all I got to say tonight. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> you just digest that. You got enough. How many, see, you might not understand that. You might be looking at your situation like, oh my God, no, you're blessed. Because yes. the Bible says you're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I am blessed. See, I've gone through that in my lifetime. I've lived 83 years and I've gone through cycles where I felt like, just give up. Anybody been there besides me? Yeah, we've all been there. Stop that foolishness. You get a hold of your brain and you say, brain, you get with it right now. I am blessed. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Even with all of the physical? Are you blessed, son? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Oh, wow. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Say, get happy. I'm blessed. Somebody stand up and say, I'm blessed. Go ahead. I dare you. Just praise you. Praise you. I'm blessed. Well, I tell you what, we'll take up a connection, a collection, and then and ship you over to Syria for about five weeks over there. When you come back here, you'll be saying, I'm blessed. Now I'm blessed, but I wasn't blessed. Man, I'm going to tell you something. We blessed. Can you imagine your body burnt 50%? When you go home, you got to wash those dishes. You wash them and say, oh God, I'm blessed to wash these dishes. I'm blessed I got soap. I'm blessed I got water. I'm blessed that I got children I can feed. I'm blessed that I got a church to come to. I'm blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Now that we're all blessed, all we can do is shout and praise the Lord. We bless. Because so many people, you wonder, what Bible are you talking like? I'm your pastor. My, I can compre- I realize what's going on out there. Hundreds of people are being committing suicide. Young people every day. Hundreds and hundreds are committing suicide, shooting, killing, murdering. And here we are, blessed. So watch your stinking thinking. Because that's a lot of pe- times people's problems. All right, who's got an extra typewriter at home they ain't using? Susan needs one. I mean, one that'll work. And I, we don't want, I don't want one. We want one that'll work. <laughs> I know you've been saving it for your great, great, great grandchildren. <laughs> This, this will go into the work of the ministry. So if you've got a typewriter, so we're looking for one. She's got a good typewriter, but she can't get the uh, ribbon. But Michelle's graciously going to look on the computer <laughs> and get the model number and try to find out where we could order the, uh, it's a cartridge that it fits in there, you know. So, but if you've got an extra typewriter, uh, just give it to Susan and I'll bless you. <laughs> All right, are you going to stay in here tonight with us? You, you all go back in the back? Okay, praise the Lord. Well, we're going to do a little something different tonight. We're just going to teach the Word. Everybody got their uh, paper? <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, we ask that as we go into the Word of God, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would rest upon us, that we might supernaturally understand and comprehend your word and what you're trying to tell us. We're not fighting for our salvation. We're not striving for our salvation as far as hell and heaven is concerned. That's been dealt with at Calvary. But Lord, we got to know how to walk down here in the spirit. We got to know how to think. And I want to thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us to think and to speak and say what the word says, what we believe. So we're going to get into the word of the Lord tonight And start believing what your word says and watch the result in our lives. And we want to thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. One of the things that we have to learn that once we are saved, we need a new identification. 
When I went in the Air Force, and I remember all of us uh, young men, I was uh, 19 years old, and we went in the Air Force, and we were trained in the civilian life how to think, and we did what we wanted to do when we wanted to do it, and we dressed like we wanted to dress, and sometimes we didn't even dress, and you know, you know what I'm talking about. We just whatever, whatever, just looked a good time to roll. Then I got in the Air Force. And there was, they expected us to shave every morning and to get up at four o'clock and start marching. While well, we didn't know our left foot from our right foot. Well, I knew what G and Hall was. I was, you know, I could plow. Somebody, I see Rick that back there smiling. And you know what my, my brain did? It woke up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I literally... Literally, I mean, my whole life changed, but I could do it. And I tell you what, that GI, that instructor, and he get right up in your face, and you changed quick. I've often said I'd like to have all of you here for about three months out here, camped out on this land. And after three months, you'd, be, you'd know your left from the right, the right from your left. I mean, you would just, how I many of you know what I'm talking about? Hmm? Okay. Well, they don't work that way in the spirit realm, but the Holy Spirit is making soldiers out of us and teaching us how to talk, how to think, how to act, how to react under His power. Learning to follow His direction. And for all those years, 19 years, I followed my own directions and did what I wanted to do. And if I wanted to chew bubble gum, I did. I did what I wanted to do. But boy, when I got into service, I mean, they even put it, we all look alike. They shaved all my hair off. And I spent years <laughs> in front of the mirror just grooming my hair when I went outside. Hallelujah. How many of the one talking about? Oh, Y'all ain't gonna. <laughs> All right. So when we become Christians, we have to learn a lot of different things. We're not talking about being saved from heaven and hell. That was dealt with at Calvary. Somebody shout. Go ahead. Hallelujah. How long we gotta stay on that? You know what I mean? We got to see that we are in the army of God now. We are soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are saints. We're not sinners no more. I didn't say you couldn't sin, but God's going to teach us how not to sin. Okay, that's all in the scriptures. Okay, now, a new identification. We were sinners, but now what's our new identification? Saints. Okay, we were children of the devil. But we are now children of God. See, you got to get a new perspective, a new identification of who we are now in Christ. And we have certain responsibilities towards him and towards one another as brothers and sisters in the Lord. So <clears throat> let's look at our little handout here. My identification with Jesus Christ. Anything by which a person or thing can be identified show to be the same as described or claimed, sameness. Our complete union with Christ in his substitutionary, substitution, substitution, yeah, that's right, you're right, you're doing, you pronounce that right. In his substitutionary to serve in place of another or his sacrifice. So here's what we got. We are brand new creations our spirit man is. Everybody got to understand that. Now, you, the, the more you understand that you're, the old you died. Said the old me died. The old me died. Just keep it dead, okay? <laughs> By reckoning it dead. <laughs> All right, so we, we know that the old us died. Now we're brand new creatures. So here we have a brand new creature, our spirit man, you still got the same body, same blue eyes, black eyes, or whatever you got, green eyes, purple eyes. But you got your brand new spirit. Man, you got to see that in your mind, okay? Because if you don't, you're not going to you're not going to identify now with this new man you are. Brand new man. 
Man, brand new creature. Is mom doing okay? Faye, you doing okay back there? Uh, maybe she's okay. All right. How many understand so far? Brand new. See, see, everything in you is going to say no to that, what I just said. Everything in you, a person, is going to say no. But that's where you've got to fall out of agreement with, that old. Now, all things are new, the Bible says. Our old position, our old is gone, buried with Christ. God did that for us. All right, let's move on now. Legal, here's the legal side. Now, there's a legal aspect of our Christianity. There's a legal, legal aspect of our salvation. It reveals to us what God did in Christ for us. If you go all through the scripture, God made us holy. God cleansed us. God saved us. God redeemed us. Uh, God made new creatures out of us. God lives in us. It's God, 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 God all the way through. Now, when you read the scriptures, you look and see all that God did for us, and by faith we accept it. Then our part, God's part, our part. What is our part? When you read the scriptures, you say, God did that. I don't have to try to do that. Why would we try to do something that God did? Now, but here we see our part. For example, if we, let's say, if we do sin, what is our part to get, what is our part in getting out from under that sin and getting God to clean us up from that sin? Well, we know we have to confess it, okay? So if we, if we confess the sin, God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we do the confessing, he does the cleansing, and we believe it, and that's it, okay? Now, the devil, we got to deal with the devil because he comes in there and say, you think God's really forgiving you? That's where you got to learn to stand on the word of God. Amen. We know that. So look what it says. It, the legal side, it reveals to us what God did in Christ for us from the time Christ went to the cross until he sat down at the right hand of the father. Or the vital side is what the Holy Spirit through the word is doing in us now. Not many Christians, they just don't understand that even though they're saved, God is still at work in his spirit and by his spirit in us. Okay? And he has to work in us. Notice this. It is God working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. So have you noticed there's, there'll be times in your life you don't want to do what God wants you to do? Has anybody ever been there besides me? Yeah, be honest. Let's tell it like it is. I believe it will. So there's times you're not going to want to do this or you're not going to want to do that. So you're going to say, God, I know what you said. You're going to be, he's going to be working in us. He's going to be working in us. And the thing about it, once he works in us, and after a while, we just enjoy doing what he wants us to do. There's no effort anymore. No effort. You just enjoy. And... And, and, and you remember when you were first Christians and you, well, it's time to go to church again. And she's like, I'm always at church. And, and that's why in this church, we try to fix it and realize you need a certain amount at home, uh, home and, and with your family and do things there. And, and aren't you glad you don't have to go to church on uh, Sunday evening? How many would like to go to church on Sunday evening? <laughs> Ain't nobody raised their hands. Because, see, we live in a different society today than it was years ago. We need time to rest and, and, and rest these bodies and spend time with one another at home with our homely family, with our family, plus our family here in church on Sunday morning. And we have special other times that, that on Wednesday night we come. So we have, we, I think we have a good balanced time of meeting together. All right, let's move on now. So, the vital side, three, identification. The legal side, the identification, we're identifying what Christ did, and what happened to us, the legal side. Then the vital side is, is what the Holy Spirit, through the Word, 
is doing in us right now so he can use us for his highest purpose now and throughout eternity. And that's where the rubber meets the road. Most of us are pretty well in position and obedient and we're faithful to the things of God. But now I'm teaching you that you might teach others. My job is to make disciples out of believers. So when you talk with people, they, they need to realize that yes, the finished work at Calvary, everything was done at Calvary, but the Holy Spirit is still working today. And let me tell you where he's working. He's working in you and me. Okay? Now, let's move on. <clears throat> Once the revelation comes into us, now notice this in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. What part of us have been crucified with Christ? The old man. The old man. It's not future. It's done. It's finished. And yet there's an experimental side of that, that as God works in us each day, he will make that a reality to us. Okay, so I have been crucified with Christ. This is our identification with Christ in his crucifixion. So he died, we died with him. The old Adam died, done away with, buried, all right? I was buried with Christ. So you gotta see yourself, the old you. Everything you hate about yourself has already been dealt with. Buried, out of sight. Ain't no need to talk about it, just thank God it's, it died with Christ and it was buried. See, God counts those things that be not as though they were. You got to start thinking like God now. Notice, I was made alive with Christ. When was you made alive? When Christ rose from the dead? We were. So now we are, we've been made alive with Christ. And now I am seated with him in his heavenly place, in the heavenly places in Christ. Now when you really get that in your mind and you believe that and you start speaking what you believe, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit does the changing. Are you listening don't try to change yourself. The Holy Spirit will change you. He does the work in you. When you start believing and start speaking what he believes, then there's a tremendous transformation in your life. Okay? I think of those years that I struggled with this wasted time. And some of you may be there now, and I'm not fussing, but I want to move you fast through that period of time. I want you to see that you are what God says you are, and you need to learn to speak that on a daily basis. And so when I pray, I, I spend a certain amount of time thanking God for what he's already done in my life. In other words, I start out, Lord, I wanna thank you that I'm a new creature in Christ. I thank you, Lord, that all my sins have been forgiven. I thank you, Lord, that I'm strong in the Lord. I know what uh, Willie uh, is feeling back. He works hard, he does hard work. Just think, I worked, and I worked hard too. I had to come in, and I had to preach on Sunday, preach on Wednesday night, pray for people, during the week counsel people, but I learned that when I get, how, get tired, how to draw the strength from the Lord. You remember those songs we sang? Did you notice it talked about strength? The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my, my shield. The Lord is my buckler. So when you're in a situation, if you're tired, you say, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my rest. Yeah. I used to come in, and Susan knew how to handle it, because she'd have dinner ready, and I'd come in, and I'd go back, and Wednesday night, I had to bring the Word of God. I'd go back and lay on the bed, and I'd just meditate on the Word of God. Lord, you are my strength. I didn't open my eyes. I just thought on the Lord. I saw the Lord. I saw him as my strength. Lord, you are strengthening me tonight. I thank you, Lord. For about 15 minutes, I lead it and I just quote, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. Notice, I'm speaking what I believe. I believe the Lord is my strength. See, I have to do that now. I'm 83 years old. I'm over there doing plumbing work under a stinking trailer where... where uh, 
snakes go, you know, back and forth. You know, Susan, I used to send her under there to do that, but she's getting too old for that now. <laughs> and I'm getting too old for it. But see, who else can I get? You know, so I do what I have to do, but I draw from God. I remember when I, when I was overcoming fear, we used to have visitation on Thursday night at, at, at the Baptist church and I'd have my names and I'd go find the, 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 the building and the place and I'd be scared to talk to the people. When I was a kid, I stuttered. Why would God pick somebody that stutters to preach and teach some words I can't pronounce? I'm learning how to pronounce. <laughs> I don't care what people think. The Lord has called me, and I'll stutter, and I'll hoot, and I'll whatever, and, and I'll get you to help me to pronounce. But I'm not ashamed. I know my position. I know God's called me. I'm strong, and when I'm under the anointing, I, watch out, I can do a whole lot of things. See, See you come to that place to get your mind renewed. So when you're hungry, what, what do you do when you're hungry? All right. When you're tired, what do you do? You, you rest or you learn to draw from the, from the Lord, the strength of the Lord. So you, some of you getting older, you better learn this now. You get my age, we'll have to go get in the car and load you up in the wheelchair and bring you down here. <laughs> You know, you know, I'm a free agent. You know, I'm just free. You know, I, I don't have no axe to grind. You know that. So I just say it, you know, and I, and I know you've grown and mature enough to I'll just overlook the old boy, you know, you get the old rock. <laughs> All right. See, I just got to speak what I know and see in my way of speaking. Now, are you seated here or are you seated with Christ in the heavenly places? That's right. You speak what you believe. Do you believe you're strong? Yes. Okay. Well, what do you say? I'm strong. I'm strong in the Lord. Do you believe you're righteous? Yes. All right. You speak what you believe. Now, if you go around speaking, I'm just, well, I'm just this and I'm that. I'm just an old sinner. I was, I'm telling you, sometimes I try people out and, and I know they go to different churches and thank God for all that and everything. Isn't it wonderful to know that you're righteous? Oh, I'm not righteous. I'm just an old sinner. How many of you know, I know that they have not learned their new identification. Come on, church. Don't shout me down. This is the word of God. I live and move and have my being because of him. Yes. Age ain't got nothing to do with God. God don't worry about 83 or 89 or 110 or 120. I'll live as long as God wants me to live and I'll keep saying the Lord is my strength. Yes. The Lord is my strength. Yes. Now. So what is that word that I, where is that found that I'm trying to get people to see? Uh, put it up on the board. Second uh, Corinthians, we will put that on the board. 413, everybody say Second Corinthians. 413, have you noticed I keep putting that things on the board? Why do I do that? To bore you? No, that you understand that this is revelation knowledge you must learn. If I was teaching you how to drive a car, when you see a red light, what do you do? Speed up, try to, Stop. huh? Stop. You, you learn that, you learn that. Now, if you see a yellow light, what do you do? You try to, <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> you see a green light, there's things you learn in the natural. Why can't we learn that? We too believe, and therefore we speak. Do you still believe you're an old sinner? No. Okay, quit speaking it. Because that's what you'll be. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so... It, see, there's certain uh, principles that... It, it, you, how many, you know how to make a cake. Boy, I mean, you know, these girls... Uh, <sighs> You know the exact temperature that you're going to set. And, all. You, and it comes out beautiful. 
Same thing with our life. We practice, we speak what we believe. Now, here's what you've got to understand. God watches over his word to perform it. We speak what we believe according to the word of God, and God watches over that word, which is his word, which we speak, and he performs it. You don't have to perform it. He will perform it. He watches over his word that we speak. Do you see that? All right. That's simple. That is not complicated. And once you realize how God works, you fall in line with how God works. Now, you may fail 10 times or 50 times, but as you practice the word of God, you're going to get better. I'll guarantee I've seen people practice things wrong. You know why they do things so much wrong? Why they do things wrong? Because they practice it so long. You know yourself. And when you try to break that thing you've been practicing a long time, isn't it hard? It is hard. But you keep at it, you keep at it, you keep at it until it breaks. And now it's easier to do this thing that God tells us to do because you practice it and God has worked in you, making you and me willing to do his good pleasure. Is light come, a little light coming in? Just a little. I'll pump on it. <coughs> Let's read on. Okay, here we go. Christ became one with us in sin. How many of you know he became sin with our sin? And we became righteous with his righteousness. Do you believe that? Yes. Do you speak that? Yes. Okay, good. I hope so. Now, some of you haven't been doing it, but I'm encouraging you to do it. So, Christ became one with us in sin, that he might become one with him, we might become one with him in righteousness. I'm righteous, not because I do everything right. I'm righteous because he's given me the gift of righteousness. Romans 5, 17, put that on the board. Notice this. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. That's a powerful scripture. All right, let's read it. For, it. for if because of one man's trespass, we know who that is, that's Adam, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, much more, everybody say much more? much more, surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, everybody say, Father, Father I, have I have received your overflowing grace. grace. Powerful, powerful. Boy, when you can see that banana pudding overflowing, can you see that? Well, think of that grace overflowing. Now notice this. Much more, they're talking about us, surely will we who have received God's overflowing grace, which is unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, the free gift of righteousness. Now, righteousness is a free gift. I'm not going to pull my wallet out, but I know you get excited when I do. <laughs> would you not receive the $20 that I'm about to give you? How many would receive $20 right now? Let's see, raise your hand. How many wouldn't? Let's go over that again now. Some of you didn't raise your hand. I don't know if you're here or somewhere else. How many in here, if I gave you a free gift of $20, you would receive it? How many? Let's see your hand. Okay. That's 100%. I would, I, I, so what I'll do is I'll just give myself. A, <laughs> you're about to break me on that. Okay. Uh, uh, that would be, you, you would insult me if you didn't receive the free gift. Does that make sense? 
Or if God has given us a free gift, why is he giving it to us? Notice this, to reign in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You see that? Now, no, your mind's got to start believing and, and seeing that and get, it gets renewed and then it gets down into your spirit. How many of you notice that when you first eat, uh, uh, how many, I don't know, chicken, everybody likes chicken. How many, it, it starts in your mouth. It ain't got down in your tummy yet. Where does it start at? In your mouth. If I will confess with thy mouth that fried chicken is good, <laughs> thy shall be filled as it goes down through and ends up in your stomach. And then it begins, notice this, explain it to me. It gets into your bloodstream and it gives you energy and strength. Explain that to me. Ah, the word of God is the same way. You speak what you believe. It first starts right here, brain, speak, then it gets down. Notice, getting down, then it gets down in your spirit. Let me tell you, what, let me tell you when it gets in your spirit, we might have to hold you down. And he went a jumping and a heaping and a hopping and a whatever. See, when it gets in your spirit, man, you are going to jump and holler, hoot and jump. But where does it start? Right there. The chicken you eat, you put it in your mouth, put it in your mouth, put it in your mouth. If you don't put it in your mouth, you're going to starve to death. And if we don't get the word of God in our mouth, if thy shall confess with thy, what? mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and then what believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved okay so let's follow this on through now Christ died to give us life all right let's read on down Christ was made sin to make us righteous Christ became weak to make us strong Christ suffered shame to give us glory. Christ took stripes on his back for our healing. Christ dealt with our old self or old nature that we might be a new creation and a partaker of his divine nature. Christ became poor that we might become rich. Christ defeated Satan and conquered the host of hell. It was our victory Colossians 2.15 tells us that. And Christ stripped Satan of his authority. Now here's the, here, is the, here is the crutch of the matter. Satan deceives. If he can deceive the people of God that they are still poor, weak, no power, just old sinners. You'll just live this, that out in your life and walk that out. And daily, you'll be, in, you'll be in the gloom doom area. The minute, listen, the minute my brain or the devil will project something in my brain, you're not doing no good, Bob. I mean, you, you're just wasting your time, you know. You know what I do with that? Instantly, I come against that if it is a rattlesnake in my pocket and I'm going to get him out fast. Let me show you how fast. <laughs> I, I, Miss Jane, I ain't going to do it to you, honey. I ain't going to get that snake out here. I just want to see how fast you can come out of that chair and hit that door. <laughs> I just, I just can't. <laughs> now, you see, if you think that that snake is a real snake, I guarantee you every one of us will be on top of these chairs. And is that not true? But it's a lie. See, a lie will affect you just like if it was true. But it's a lie. And if you speak that lie, it'll affect you. It'll program you. And you'll become what that lie tells you. But if you believe the truth... Jesus said, you shall know the lie and it shall set you free. Huh? What? I missed that? 
No, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the truth is the, of, the, of the matter is Satan has lost his power and the only power he has over us is his deception. Deceive, he's cunning. Paul said to the Corinthians, I'm scared, I'm afraid that you're going to be deceived like Eve was by Satan. So, how many Christians are walking around and don't know who they are? They have no identification. They have no purpose in life. They don't know who they are. They're just wandering around. They, they go to church. They practice religion. But they have no real relationship with God Almighty because they've not accepted what the Lord has done for them. God is my Heavenly Father. Period. That's it. He's my heavenly father. And I call him Abba Father. Abba Father. Abba Father. You have a heavenly father. And he loves you. Go with God. Go with God's word. Speak what he has done already. Get it in your mind. And get the old thoughts out and think on that which is pure honest and good because when people do I see a change in their everything in their walk in their in their character in their uh, how they handle things uh, act and react God does the work God does the work the inward work it is God working everybody say it is God working in me making me willing to do his good pleasure so every day thank God thank God all right amen thank God now we got about 10 minutes look at the right hand side of the paper there I have been made rich because of Christ let's read that I am the righteousness of God in Christ I'm not going to be. I am. Remember, righteousness is a what? Gift. Righteousness is a what? Gift. 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 Romans 5, 17. Righteousness is a gift. That means right standing with God. And he did it. And he did it. And he did it. Oh, I love it. I am rooted and grounded in love. Paul says, it's the love of God that moves me, that motivates me. It's the love of God that gives me that what I need to do, what I, I do for people. I am a partaker of God's divine nature. That's what you believe. That's what you speak. See, these are the things that we're to speak and to believe. I am strong in the Lord. Everybody say, I am Strong in the Lord. Strong in the Lord. Uh, sometimes I just sing it. I, I, you know, I can't sing, but I, I make it tell. Like, I'm strong in the Lord. I get you like that. I'm strong in the Lord. I'm strong. I said I'm strong in the Lord. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong in the Lord. Did you hear that, Susan? You got a strong husband. Mm, 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 mm. I'm strong in the Lord. I said, I'm strong in the Lord. Oh, yes. Man, get happy. You all don't do that? Yeah, I know she does. Yeah, break out of that old shell. Break out that shell. <clears throat> you know what a cocoon is? I didn't say a coon, but a cocoon. <laughs> that butterfly ain't going back in that old cocoon. You come out of that old cocoon. Stay out of him. Yeah. Just let it hang on the tree. It's dead. It served its purpose. Now I'm a new creation. Mm -mm. I'm a new butterfly. Mm. I used to be a worm, but now, hallelujah, since I've gone through that little transformation of, uh, I don't know, understand how it happened, but I, I know I'm a new creation. I can fly like a butterfly. 
See, you get happy in this thing. Yeah, you can have fun being a Christian. The joy, now notice this, you're coming into the joy. Some of you are getting joyful now. Don't get radical on me now. Ah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm. I said the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh man, get right in there. The devil's about to have a nervous breakdown. Come on. I tell you right now, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'll tell you another thing. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Woo, look at me. I'm getting happy. Mm. It's okay to get happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't say the word, just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yo, yeah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. See, you're, you're, you're putting God to work. You're saying his word. And, and he has to watch over his word to perform it. I don't have to perform it. He does the work in me. And I just get happy in him. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'll tell you another thing. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, a little demonstration, five more minutes. <laughs> it's getting good, isn't it? Okay, let's go. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> I have a home in heaven. That's what you speak. I have peace with God and the peace of God. See, having the peace of God is one thing. Now, you know how to get the peace of God? Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And the peace of God will keep your heart and mind at rest as you trust Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, God will do the work. Yeah, yeah. God will do the work. In you. See, religion changes the outside. But the Holy Spirit changes the inside. And that's when things begin to click in your life. Hallelujah. You don't have to, you get to. Hallelujah. Look what it says here. I have peace with God and the peace of God. I have authority in the name of Jesus. God has given us authority over all the powers of of darkness. Notice this. Our weapons are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. I am God conscious. Now, here's some, what you're going to have to cross over. Instead of being sin conscious and all about me conscious, now you're God conscious and you are righteous conscious. And the transformation is taking place now. Because now you're speaking what you believe. But as long as you speak what you believe over here, that's all you'll ever be. But when you start speaking what you believe and what the word of the Lord tells us to believe, then God goes to work and performs his work and watches over his word that you speak. Put uh, Proverbs uh, 320 up there. Let's, let me tell you how powerful the Word of God is. How powerful the Word of God is. And we're going to close here just shortly. By his knowledge, the deep were broken up and the skies distill the dew. All right. Go to the next verse, 21. Proverbs 3. My son, let them not escape from your sight, but keep sound and godly wisdom and discretion. Next verse, 22. And they will be life to your inner self, talking about the word of God now, and a gracious ornament to your neck, your outer self, and verse 23. Then you will walk in your way securely and in confidence trust, and you shall not dash your foot or stumble. And verse 24. When you lie down, you shall not be afraid. Yes, you shall lie down, and your sleep shall be sweet. 
point to be able to get into bed and sweet sleep. Awesome. All right, here we go. So I am not sin conscious anymore, but I am what? God conscious. Conscious, conscious. Now, be honest with yourself. What are you thinking all during the day? You don't have to answer. Give it, give it a thought. Are you thinking of what the Lord has done, how gracious he is, who you are in Christ? Now think about that. Well, you say, no, I'm not. Well, your mind's not renewed yet. That's why I got this for you. And that's why we got the scripture sheets. You get into word and see what God has done and who we are and our new identification. I tell you, when I got my new identification that I was an airman, I mean, we all, we all did everything right together, didn't we? I mean, we, hey, 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 hey. Everybody together. Some people, now I know some of you in the service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had to have our minds renewed. And I'm saying, let me see, left means, uh, what is left means? Boy, if you, did, you found that real quick, that got you, you out but good. Put you in front of everybody. Cover her up to your nose. Rub his nose and take, take your nose up like Son, do you understand you in the United States Air Force? Yes, sir. I didn't hear you. I said yes, sir. I still didn't hear you, boy. Yes, sir. All right, those in the service, raise your hand. Let's see if you've been there. There's one, two, three. Yeah, yeah. Y'all thought we was having fun while we was in the service. All right, here we go. One more minute. I have, uh, uh, <clears throat> oh, here we go. I have God's ability and wisdom. I have the Holy Spirit in me and with me. I have forgiveness of sin. Now, if you've been forgiven of all your sin, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, help me out here. I may be missing it, but what sin do you have? None. Does, does that make sense? Yes. I mean, is the, is the blood lost its power? No. No, if God says he's forgiven us of all our sins, you know, you got no sin. I didn't say you couldn't sin, but I ain't got no sin on me right now. And I know if I did make a mistake, I instantly, I deal with it just like that. Yes. First John 1, 9, boom. Yes. And, I, and I know I've forgiven everybody. I bless everybody. When I speak it, I'm forgiven. Yes. Yes. See, because see, you got a devil that's working on you. You're not forgiven. Who do you think you are? Well, you tell him who you are. You born again, spirit filled believer. You speak what the word of God says. All right, look what it says. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I have salvation, health, healing, security, prosperity, and wholeness. That's what salvation, all that's under salvation. My heavenly father loves me and cares for me. I have a faithful high priest, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. We have one that's been tempted in every way we have been, but without sin. And I have the angel of the Lord encamped around about me. Woo, man, bring them in. The Lord, send those angels around and push back all those powers of darkness. I am rich. Thank you, Jesus. I will rise and take my place and go forth in Jesus' name and begin to speak what I believe. And I believe the word of God. Yes. Over my feelings, yes. over any lie of the devil. Yes. Put your foot down. That's it. Concrete in. Boop. That's it. And it takes a little while, but after a while, wow, God does not lie and he will perform his word. He watches over it to perform it. Notice he performs it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now that a little bit more we are learning. And this week we're going to put it in practice and more so. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.